Thank you for joining us to participate in the Chesapeake Bay Program Benthic Macro Invertebrate Monitoring Project with the CMC. You might already do benthic monitoring and wonder why this process is different. There are some watersheds that have no official benthic macro invertebrate data collected in the last decade. Your efforts are helping us fill that gap. The data will not only go to the EPA and Chesapeake Bay program, but will be made available to you, the volunteers, and the public through the Chesapeake Data Explorer. Before watching this video, you should have been in contact with the CMC service provider and selected one or more monitoring locations that would work for this project. Next, you will watch this video and complete the monitoring quiz. Then you will pick up the sampling kit that includes all of your field sampling equipment and the sampling jars at your regional distribution point or through a coordinated drop-off with your CMC service provider. You will then collect a sample following this protocol at your pre-selected sampling site. Preserve everything that you collect with ethanol in a sample jar stream side, and then return the sample to a regional hub along with your equipment. These samples will later be picked and subsampled by volunteers and CMC staff and identified to family level by EPA Wheeling Lab staff. All of the equipment for this project will be loaned to you by the CMC team. The equipment is stored in regional hubs and will be distributed to volunteers seasonally as needed to collect samples. Let's go through the items you'll find in your equipment kit. First, you will have a D-net with a 500 micron mesh to collect your samples in the stream. You will also be given boots if you do not have your own so that you can walk into the stream. If you are bringing your own boots, make sure that they do not have felt soles. You'll be given a sieve bucket to hold your sample while you're taking your kicks, either this 500 micron mesh bucket or this DIY equivalent. A sample container, preservative, to preserve the samples after leaving the field, and waterproof labels to put inside the sample jars. You may also have tape and gallon plastic bags as secondary containment. A spray or squirt bottle for cleaning the D-net into the bucket and cleaning the bucket into the jar. Forceps to help pick the bugs out of the net and bucket if needed. A tape measure to measure the distances on site and potentially flagging tape if you need to mark the ends of your sampling stretch. You will have a field data sheet, a marker to label the jar, and a pen and or pencil to write on the field data sheet, and your field sampling manual. Lastly, you'll have safety gear, gloves, a first aid kit, and hand sanitizer. You may also want to bring suntan lotion and bug spray if needed. After you pick up your equipment, you will head out to your predetermined site or sites. When you get to your site, the first thing to do is walk along your stream site to identify the points in the stream you will be collecting from and to measure out 100 meters of stream to identify your endpoints. We are looking to collect samples from the riffles, which are ideal habitat for macroinvertebrates in a stream because there is good physical space for them to live between the rocks and a lot of oxygen from the bubbling of the water. To identify riffles, look for water bubbling over a rocky bottom with cobbles the size of lemons to grapefruits. You want to select a sampling location with enough cobbles that can be picked up and rubbed thoroughly. Stream locations that have bubbles but are at bedrock are not good sampling locations. You will need to identify six spots throughout the stream to collect your samples. Ideally, this would encompass at least two riffles and get a good balance of slow flowing shallow riffles and fast flowing deeper riffles. The six spots should be located throughout the width of the stream to include left descending, middle, and right descending areas. Starting downstream, you can start collecting your sample. First, you need to take a temperature reading and record the value on your field data sheet. Then you will start collecting your benthic sample. You will need at least two people in the stream and a third person with a timer and the data sheet. Go to your first sampling spot with your DNet and your bucket. Here you will take your first Kick. One person will hold the net and the other person will do the collection. A single kick consists of disturbing the bottom of the stream across the width of the net and at most two net widths upstream and getting two to four inches down into the stream bottom. To do this, rub large sticks and stones from the sampling area thoroughly for 40 seconds to dislodge any tightly clinging organisms putting rocks you have already rubbed off to the side so you don't re-rub them. Then for 20 seconds, using a flat rock to scrape, 
disturbed the lower rocks and the stream bottom, trying to get the water to run a muddy brown in that time. You will then repeat the whole 60 second process, ideally directly adjacent to your first kick. However, your second kick could be slightly above your first kick, depending on the stream bed. Empty the contents of your net into the bucket, being careful not to lose any of the debris or organisms you have collected. Sit the bucket into the stream so that it is half full of water and turn the net inside out and wash the net into the bucket. With a squirt bottle filled with stream water, rinse any missed parts into the bucket. Double check the net to make sure you don't miss any bugs. Repeat this process five more times, moving upstream with each kick. Keep the bucket with you, continuing to empty the contents of the net into the bucket as you move along. Once all of your kicks have been completed, do a final rinse of your net into the bucket and move out of the stream. Now you will transfer the contents of your bucket into the sampling jar. You should prep the label that is included on the inside of the sample jar and the label outside of the sample jar with the following information. Station ID, lat long coordinates, date, time, and monitors. Before transfer, you will need to remove any large rocks and salamanders from the bucket. Crayfish stay in the sample. Be sure to thoroughly wash any items removed from the sample to make sure that all bugs stay in the sample. Now everything that is in your bucket should be put into the sample jar. If you are using the sieve bucket, first, with gloves, use your hand to carefully transfer the bulk of materials from your bucket to the sample jar. Get as much of the large pieces into the jar as you can. Then you will use a spray bottle, this time filled with ethanol to wash the sides and bottom of the bucket to get the remaining smaller debris and bugs into the jar. This will take some time, and you may need to spray from multiple angles to get everything. Make note to spray from the backside through the bottom of the bucket to get any bugs that may have gotten caught between the mesh and the metal pieces. It is helpful to have two people for this part. Keep checking the bucket until you don't see any more moving bugs. There may still be some debris left in the bucket. If you are using a DIY bucket, first, wash as much of the debris down to the bottom of the mesh bag as possible. Then remove the mesh bag from the inside of the bucket. With gloves on, gently grab the net just above the debris and roll the sides of the bag down. Turn the bag upside down into the sample jar and push the contents into the jar. Gently pull the mesh bag out as you pour ethanol through the bag to wash debris and bugs off. Once the bag is completely out of the sample jar, inspect for bugs, either pulling them off with your finger or forceps, or placing the mesh over the opening of the jar and using the ethanol squirt bottle to gently wash any remaining contents into the jar. Repeat the process until all the bugs are in the jar. Once all of your sample is in the jar, fill the jar with ethanol so that there is double the ethanol as collected contents. If you need more space for your sample, use a second sample jar. Place the completed label inside the jar. Close the lid tightly, and if necessary, secure the jar with duct tape and plastic bags. Once you have completed your sample, make sure you completely fill out your data sheet. On the front of the data sheet, you will enter the names of the sampling team, the station ID provided by your CMC service provider, the sample date, lat long coordinates, start and end time, and any additional comments about your sampling day. You will also record the water temperature taken at the beginning of your sample the length of the stream sampled in meters, number of riffles sampled, and the number of kicks completed. On the back of the data sheet, you will draw a simple diagram of the stream and mark which points in the stream you are collecting your sample. Use this diagram to mark off your spots as you move along. Pack up your supplies and clean your boots and equipment. If you're going to another stream that day, be sure to decontaminate your boots and equipment before you move to your next site. Once you have collected your sample, you will drop off the equipment kit and sample jars with your CMC service provider. The sample will be picked and subsampled and sent to the wheeling lab in West Virginia to identify the bugs to the family level. Once the samples are analyzed, the data will be publicly available on the Chesapeake Data Explorer and provided to the Chesapeake Bay program for use in the Chessie Bibby. Thank you for participating in this sampling protocol and filling in much needed data gaps.